today is Valentine's Day. So let's talk about some reasons to love valine, as well as some reasons not to love when it's on the surface of proteins, such as hemoglobin, which can cause sickle cell anemia, where these proteins are clumping up because valine likes to be on the inside of proteins, not the outside. So let's talk about why um, this amino acid is special and cool, and yeah, let's go. Each of the amino acids, or like protein letters, has a unique side chain or R group. And if you look at valine, its side chain looks like a V, or at least if it was flipped over. And this is helpful because, well, its initial is a V. Um, this V actually stands for like valeric acid, or I mean like the valine, the name which comes from valeric acid. But it's really helpful that it's a V and it looks like a V. And this V is a hydrocarbon. Um, and so basically it's made up of just hydrogens and carbons. What's special about that is that when you have a hydrocarbon, um, basically water, it's hydrophobic. So water doesn't want to hang out with it. Much more on this in other posts. But basically each of those carbons and hydrogens and all those other atoms are made up of smaller subatomic parts, protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and electrons are oppositely charged, so the protons are positive and the electrons are negative, and those protons are kind of like held in place, but the electrons can actually kind of move around a little, and atoms share pairs of electrons in order to form bonds. They don't always share these fairly, though, and so what you can get is the electrons hanging out more among some um, near some atoms than others. And when you have this, you get this partial separation of charge, and we call this polarity. Water is a great example of polarity because the oxygen is, is electronegative. It hogs those electrons. And the, this makes it so that the, elect, the oxygen is going to be partly negative and the hydrogen partly positive. You have opposite charges attract, and so water is really sticky to itself as well as to other polar or um, partially or fully charged things. In the case of a hydrocarbon, like you have in valine, basically carbon and hydrogen share pretty fairly, so there's not going to be that separation of charge, which makes this really unappealing to the water. And this makes it so that the water is going to exclude it. So you're going to find valine kind of the um, found in the center of proteins, at least when we're talking about like solu water soluble proteins. The valine is going to want to hang out in the center because the water is going to be kind of forcing it there because the water is going to want to form bonds to other water molecules rather than form bonds to those hydrophobic things. And this forces the hydrophobic things in towards the center of the protein. So you typically find valine in the center of a protein. What happens if you find it on the surface? Well, this can lead to disorders like sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is caused by a mutation in the gene for one of the subunits of beta of hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is this protein complex that transports oxygen throughout your bloodstream. And it's, so it has to hold on to oxygen and travel throughout the bloodstream, going from oxygen-rich environments to oxygen-poor environments over and over and over again. And like all soluble proteins, it tends to have its hydrophobic parts on the inside and its hydrophilic or water-loving parts on the outside. So on the outside of a protein, you'll typically have those like polar, those polar amino acids, so things that are partially charged or even things that are fully charged. So, for example, in hemoglobin, there's this glutamate, which is a negatively charged amino acid, and it's going to be found on the surface, and so it's going to be able to hang out with water and all is happy, it's very hydrophilic, but what happens is if you have this sickle cell anemia mutation, that gets swapped for a valine, and as we talked about, valine is really hydrophobic, and so we're not going to typically find it on the surface of a protein. And what happens when you find it on the surface of a protein is it's going to want to find something else that it can hang out with that's hydrophobic because the water is going to exclude it. So it's going to have to bond to something other than water. And what's going to happen is that as this hemoglobin is traveling throughout the bloodstream through oxygen poor and oxygen rich environments, this site um, becomes kind of like more exposed or less exposed. And when it's in oxygen-poor environments, what can happen is that it gets more exposed. 
and this is going to cause it to link up to other hemoglobin molecules. It's going to seek out a hydrophobic patch or another hemoglobin molecule, and this is going to make it link up and form these long fibers. Now, the soluble like individual hemoglobins are really great for, for carrying oxygen throughout your bloodstream, but these weird fibers, not so much. What they're going to do is they're going to cause the red blood cells to get misshapen, and these misshapen blood cells can then clog blood vessels. And this is a condition called basal obstruction, and it leads to these painful sickle cell crises in which blood can't get to um, various appendages and organs. Um, and so when you, and as it's going through, and so because remember we said that it was like worse in the oxygen poor states, but this blood is going through these oxygen rich and oxygen poor states as it um, travels throughout the body, delivering oxygen to various tissues. And so you're going to get this hemoglobin molecules linking up. So polymerizing and unlinking, depolymerizing over and over and over and over. And this is going to really stress out the cell. And so these cells are going to have a shortened lifespan as well. So sickle cell anemia is a serious and life threatening um, disease that is caused by this mutation from a glutamate to a valine. And this really shows you the power of a single hydrophobic amino acid. Um, so the single valine is able to really cause all this, all these things because of its hydrophobicity. And so valine is not the only hydrophobic amino acid. And so if you look at the chart of amino acids, you can see that there's a number of these that have in common that they have these hydrocarbon side chains. Um, there's also some of them, valine is not the only one that has that kind of like branching structure. Um, and so when you think about the side chains being kind of just like straight chains, um, or they can have like the rings, those ones with like the rings, those special rings, those resonance stabilized rings, or the aromatic amino acids. And then the non-aromatic ones are the aliphatic, um, but within the aliphatic, you can have the straight chains or you can have the branches. And so valine is one of the branch ones, along with like isoleucine and leucine. And with valine, it's the smallest of these branched ones, but because the branch is close to the backbone, it's actually going to be less flexible than something like leucine, where you have the, where it's more like a snake tongue where that V is pushed out one. So valine is going to have a hard time forming um, like tight secondary structures. It's going to have a hard time um, kind of like contorting in different, into different shapes in terms of the backbone. So it's going to kind of restrict the movement of the protein backbone when you have a valine. And like the other branch chain amino acids, it goes through this branch chain amino acid um, breakdown pathway. And like these other branch chain amino acids, it's going to be essential. So our bodies, we need to get it through our diet. So we need all of the amino acids, but some of them our bodies can make them ourselves and some we can't and valine is one that we can't. So we can't make it, but we can break it down to this branch chain amino acid um, complex and things. Um, and so when we break it down, we actually get, we get sesenol coa and succinyl CoA can enter the tricarboxylic acid cycle, aka the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. And this can um, produce oxaloacetate, which can be used to make glucose. And so we call valine glucogenic. So that is the basics of your valine. So it's one of the smaller ones, but because it's got that branch close to its backbone, it's going to restrict motion movement. One of the main features of it is it's going to be very hydrophobic. And so it's just got this hydrocarbon chain, hydrogens and carbons, they share electrons pretty fairly. So they don't give any partial charge for water to, um, to water to hang out with. And so valine is gonna to want to be in the center of the protein. And as you see in the case of sickle cell anemia, if it gets put on the outside of a protein, you can have some serious problems. And so I hope that helps you appreciate valine. Um, and if you want to learn more about all of these different amino acids, I have lots more content on my blog and YouTube channel and all that stuff. So happy enjoying amino acids.